and this is being organized by the Philippine Astronomical Society. So the car is parked at the bottom of the hill. We just had to cart all of our gear up. So I'm a little out of breath, including all of our battery packs. It's an off-grid site. So um, we're gonna go and finish setting everything up. Chair, table, laptop, the uh, telescopes already there. And um, skies are looking good at the moment. Hopefully they stay like this. And uh, maybe I'll be able to get some imaging tonight of some nebulae that I'm not able to get from my usual place at home. That's the idea anyway. Um, if I've got a view kind of to the south sky rather than the north. So here we are in the field, got everything set up. Sun's starting to go down. We should be imaging stuff to the kind of um, south, southwest area of the sky. So that's nice. It's an area that I don't get to get from, from our house. Um, I'm mostly kind of west to northwest. So we should get some uh, different targets this evening. So things have been going quite well. I got um, a little bit of time imaging the um, Seagull Nebulae, which I haven't done before. Um, but now it's starting to dip down into the light dome that comes up from Metro Manila, which is um, causing some of the, the nebulae to get washed out. So I stopped imaging that, and I've now gone over to the Whirlpool Galaxy M51, which is in the dark part of the sky. I'm going to image that for a couple of hours and then we'll see what's around um, after that. Uh, anything interesting, stuff that I don't usually um, be able to image from home. So we've had an interesting evening so far. There's a few other people here with rigs and there's a lot of people here just um, stargazing with their eyes and um, listening to the lectures that have been going on from some of the um, UP uh, yes, University of the Philippines um, Astronomy Club and students. So I left uh, everything at around 1.30, 2 a.m. to go down to our tent, which is down here in the car park. And um, at about 3.30ish, I was woken up by some sound of rain. I dashed back up and luckily um, some other guys had noticed and already put a tarpaulin over everything so i'm not sure how wet stuff got it wasn't heavy rain it was drizzle but um anyway i'm now walking back up we'll um take a look at the gear make sure nothing's too wet i don't think anything's damaged but certainly our imaging session was interrupted and we are not going to have um as much data as I was hoping on some of the targets, but uh, well, we'll probably have something. So let's uh, go and have a look. So the telescope was okay. It wasn't very wet, although I did miss the last couple of hours of imaging. So I got um, Bodes and Cigar Galaxy last night. We also got the Seagull Nebulae, a little bit on M51 um, before it started raining. But we'll uh, process the days later when we get home. Now it's just time to pack everything up and carry it back down to the car. See other people are already starting to pack up and head off. So I just got back from the Philippine Astronomical Society uh, Milky Way camp and uh, got all the gears unloaded and dried out. And now um, I'm going to take a look at the data that we captured on uh, the several targets that I tried imaging last night. And we'll see how that data has come out after we um, stack it and um, process it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the data that we collected on the Seagull Nebulae. Here it is in PixInsight. Um, these are 300 second exposures. And I'm just going to check them out here in Blink. And we'll see what we've got. These all look pretty good. It did start to get, you can see they get lighter as the night goes on. That's as it got lower in the sky. The Seagull Nebulae was um, approaching the light dome of Manila, um, which is why I then stopped imaging it and switched to another target because it was starting to get a little bit washed out. So that all looks good. Now let's take a look at some of the others. 
Okay, so this one is Boat's Galaxy. Um, this one should start out okay, but um, yeah, it gets bad. Uh, this is when the rain started. Um, so we're gonna have to get rid of some of these. You can see also as well, it goes really badly out of alignment after a, I guess a cloud or something passed over. Um, so we'll see what we can do with this data. Okay, so I've cleaned up the data here on Bode's Galaxy. Um, so these are the now um, images that we've got left. Not too bad. Um, not a lot of images, 200 seconds each. Not sure exactly how many we got there, but maybe we got an hour worth of data or something on this. Um, we'll see what we can get out of it later on when we stack it. Okay, so this one's the Whirlpool Galaxy. This one's gonna be interesting to look at. Um, I think we're gonna end up with a lot of rejects here. This is basically when it started raining and um, everything got covered up. So you can see there, it goes crazy. So um, we've got a lot <clears throat> to get rid of there. And it's a shame because it actually starts off really nice um, at the beginning. Okay, so this is what we're left with from the Whirlpool Galaxy is 180 second exposures. We've got a few of them. We've got some satellites flying through a couple of the images there. Um, so <clears throat> also as well, it um, flips around. Uh, so we got a couple of images early on in the evening before uh, I think it changes location. Or did we get rid of those as well? Yeah, they're gone also. So um, yeah, uh, not too much data on this, but looks like it's quite good quality data. The small amount that we did get, a little bit out of focus. Some of the stars there, some slight trailing, but we can fix that later. So this is one I'd never imaged before, and I'm particularly interested in trying to get something out of this. Um, so this is the Pencil Nebulae. Um, I've been wanting to do it for a while, but not able to get it from my location. I didn't get a lot of data. It started getting low in the sky. Um, and obviously you can see there, we got a few dud frames. Um, but anyway, um, we might have something usable from this. They're 300 second exposures, so they are five minutes long. And even if we get, you know, only 10 of them, we've still got 50 minutes. It's a start. I don't think we'll get a really good image out of this, but I can add to this data at, a, at another time. And finally, I did collect a bunch of pictures of the moon as well last night, early on. Um, so you can see what we got there. Uh, this could be quite nice when it's stacked. Um, nice waxing crescent moon there. So... All in all, not a total waste of an evening. Um, it could have been better. We could have had some slightly better weather towards the end of the night, which would have just capped it off really nicely. But let's get on now with the stacking process of these various images and see what we can get out of it. So this is my stack and quick auto stretch of the pencil nebulae. You can see the pencil nebulae in this area here. Um, it really does need a lot more um, data, but we've got the beginnings of it there, and I was kind of expecting this anyway. I only got um, probably about 30 minutes of, of actual usable data on this, um, and it is quite a faint and small um, nebulae there, but um, maybe with a little bit of playing around, I can get something out of this, but it certainly isn't going to be a finished image at all. Um, so there's the beginnings of our pencil nebulae. You can see the brighter nebulae over here um, has, has started to show through. But the main thing here, the pencil is um, still very faint. So this is going to need a lot more integration time. So the pencil nebulae, as I expected, um, was basically pretty much useless. Um, I, I can just keep that data for future when I, when I gather more. Um, there's no point in even even editing it. I, I stacked it and did an auto stretch, and, and basically um, there's hardly anything there. It's so noisy um, just to see anything. So I'm uh, almost done now um, with the base weighted batch pre-processing of the Seagull Nebulae. This is probably going to be uh, this and the Moon will probably be the two main images that I get out of last night's session. Possibly something on um, M51 or the Whirlpool Galaxy. And the Bode's galaxy, we'll see how they go. Um, but as far as nebulae's, I think the Seagull nebula is probably going to be about the best that I get. So um, once this uh, weighted batch pre-processing script is done, which it almost is, then um, I'll be uh, proceeding with um, stacking it and uh, we'll give it a quick stretch and we'll see what we get.
So here's my uh, stack of the boat galaxy. Um, this needs a little bit more work. There's uh, something going along with the alignment of the stars here. So I need to take a look at this. Um, but we have some data there. You can see there is the um, galaxies, but this is not usable in its current form. Um, so I'll have to <clears throat> spend a little bit more time on this one, but there is there is something there that we could possibly use. So now I'm gonna go on and stack the M51 data that um, I collected, which was only a very short period of time before it started raining. I'm suspecting that the issues here, probably down to tracking and um, because it started raining in the clouds that came in. So here's our Whirlpool Galaxy. We've got a similar issue here with the star alignment and um, also it probably doesn't help. I didn't take calibration frames because um, the weather turned and so everything was covered up and um, I, I just didn't get a chance to take the calibration frames. So that's probably one of the reasons why we got such awful amount of noise here and also as well we've got the star alignment problems um so maybe a little bit of work i might be able to clear these up i'm not really sure if it's worth it um the sequel nebulae though is, is probably what we got most of out of last night um i'll continue to add to that data and uh, overall though it was still a fun um evening i had an opportunity to share um my astrophotography rig with a couple of other people who were there who hadn't seen such a setup before. There were some um, newbies who had never done any astrophotography or any type of astronomy before. So uh, we spent some time early in the evening going through what the equipment is and how it works. And um, we got some images of the Horsehead Nebulae and the Orion Nebulae. So I spent some time early on in the evening, which was probably actually the bit, the better hours before um, the weather started to turn. Um, getting some data on those because they're bright targets. And so I didn't have to do any, really any imaging processing. People were able to see those right away on the screen. Um, so still a fun night out. Um, we got some usable data from the um, Seagull Nebulae and um, maybe I can do something with this uh, once I spend some time to align it. So thanks very much for tuning into the video and um, thanks very much also to the Philippine um, Astronomical Society for organizing last night's event.